Good. like so far? Is it, is it surreal or do you feel, are you feeling comfortable? Or? I'm kind of feeling a lot right now, you know, first day, uh, I guess second day technically, but fun to finally get into it, you know, get into the playbook a little bit. I was kind of itching to, to get the playbook a little bit early, wanted to get in there, but happy to learn it this way too. You can actually learn from the coaches the way they want to teach it. So really happy to be in the classroom, you know, we just got our first walkthrough, able to go out there and move around just a little bit, just, uh, yeah, really, really excited. Yeah, has it been meeting with and interacting with uh, Coach Gilbert, Coach Goodwin? Um, they're obviously going to be working the most with you. They, they spoke very highly of you when, when we talked to them recently. So uh, what's your impression of them? Yeah, been awesome to work with them. You know, they're high, high energy guys, um, you know, just good guys to just talk to, I think. And uh, each have their own kind of niche, uh, you know, Coach Goodwin's more of like the run guy, and Joe's more of the uh, pass guy. So, you know, you get a little bit of taste. You know, they obviously know a little bit of everything, uh, being where they are. But, yeah, just just seems like they're really good guys to learn from. Both of the coaches that you just spoke of were talking about what you did at the senior bowl, your willingness to go from playing tackle in college to moving inside, playing guard, and also center at the senior bowl. And they said that's what really jumped out, you know, to them. It wasn't just the college tape, it was that. What did that, um, your performance and those practices and what you'll do for you? Well, I think, like you said, the biggest thing is just show that you know, a lot of people projected me inside, uh, not playing tackle at the next level, and which is what I played in college. So just to show that I can go in and, and play effectively inside, and not only that, but just play really any of the spots, I think that makes you that much more valuable. So just that's the biggest thing, you know, playing against better competition, but also just the ability to play anywhere on the offensive line. And, and a lot of times they talk about um, a big, the biggest drop off they see sometimes from college to pro is what's happening in the trenches. And so, you know, that's, that's why they were eager to see your tape and that they were eager to see what you could do in Mobile. So like for you, did, I mean, did you already kind of know, yeah, I got this, I could do this at the next level and I could play all over this line? Or, or did Mobile kind of serve as that confidence boost that you needed? I'd say a little bit of both. You know, I feel comfortable. I've always kind of felt comfortable playing. But again, the first time I actually was able to play guard and center was at the Senior Bowl. So that really did reaffirm that. Uh, you know, you c can play really any of the five spots. So um, I was confident going in, but it just reaffirmed my, my confidence in the ability to play any of those spots. Cody, how naturally the heat and the humidity down here in Florida is not too kind to big guys, right? Uh, you played up in North Dakota in a dome stadium. And those conditions down here, it's going to get even hotter and more humid. What's your mindset about that transition, and what do you plan to do this summer to really get acclimated? Yeah, it really couldn't be any different than what I was used to in college or growing up. So i uh, excited for it. I uh, just got to drink a lot of water. You get with the nutrition staff and figure out the right thing to do, you know, eliminate cramps. Just make sure you're, all, you know, not dehydrated. Uh, just for, I think the biggest thing is just drink water all the time. That's probably a good start, and uh, I think we'll go from there. Yeah, I haven't really seen them around, I guess. You know, I think they were probably out of the office by the time we got here yesterday. But excited to you know, get to meet those guys and start to build a relationship with them. Not only to play next to them, but just to get to know them as people. So uh, uh, really excited for that. David Jensen had texted GM Jason Light and, and said that he wanted to bleep, or wanted to bleep, you know, bleep up with you. Just your, your thoughts on that. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh, that's awesome. You know, to have a guy like that say something about you, uh, it, it's, a great, it's a great feeling. And, you know, I'm the same way. I'm excited to get, get down here, you know, compete for a spot and then really just get on the right track to just move people. Cody, I know you haven't snapped at a game. How, how, how naturally did center come to you when he, when he kind of jumped in and tried it there? It was, it was pretty natural. You know, I think football is football. Um, you know, the five spots are all a little bit different, but they're all the same. I mean, you're doing the, the same thing. It's, just, it's not too much different. It's just with center, now you got to snap the ball, too. Uh, once you can get comfortable with that, you're just playing football. So it wasn't too bad. You're a guard right now. You're trying to just focus on learning. Guard. Yes, correct. The willingness to try the new positions and, and also play a position that has a lot of contact in the NFL. I mean, you, you talk about uh, growing up. At the age of eight, you were driving tractors and crashing. And where does that fearlessness come from for you? I, 
big family, you know, always just doing physical stuff together. My, my older brother and I, our cousins, you know, we're always just kind of roughhousing. Maybe that's where it comes from. Maybe it's the farming background, uh, cr crashing a lot of vehicles on the farm. Just uh, maybe it's something like that. But uh, whatever it is, you know, grateful for, for the way I grew up. And I was going to say, um, to that effect, what does what growing up on a farm teach you? I can imagine you have a lot of responsibility you learn at a young age. And that's what I think it is, is just uh, you grow up a lot quicker. You, you have to take on responsibility at a younger age. Uh, they trust you to do a lot of things. They trust you to not cr crash the tractors, and here I am crashing the tractors. So, you know, there's a little give and take there. But really it's just, yeah, uh, in, in the summer, you know, you're a 10-year-old kid. All you want to do is go to the park and play basketball with your friends. But, you know, you got to be at the shop at 7 a.m. to help out in the farm. So it's just growing up quicker, learning uh, to take on responsibility at a younger age. Well, it started out just sweeping the shop. It's something as easy as that. And then we got in, you know, we do our own maintenance on our equipment. So it would be, you know, changing different things on the equipment. And then once we were able to, I'd be in the tractor driving around. Even, even like this last summer, I would go home from uh, school and drive semi, haul corn around. So I've been, anything you can think of with farming, you know, probably done it. A lot of pick and rock when we were younger, which was never a fun thing. Yeah, that was awesome. Uh, and I was really pumped when I saw that he got drafted. Uh, great guy. You know, we knew each other for three, four years at North Dakota State. We were in the same class together. So fun to be able to talk to him again, kind of hear, you know, how it's been going for him the last couple of years, a lot of success that he's had. But just as a person, it's just fun to see him again and, and interact with him again because, uh, you know, haven't had that in a couple of years. So, yeah, excited for him. As far as this um, uh, rookie mini camp and OTAs is coming up soon, are you setting any goals for yourself? Anything you want to specifically uh, work on or focus on? Or are you just kind of still getting the lay of the land? That's the biggest thing right now, getting the lay of the land. You know, obviously have high goals for myself. But, um, but really, I just want to compete. I just want any chance I can compete, whether it's in the classroom, the weight room, the field. I'm just going to try to compete. And, you know, I think that will you know, help me accomplish some of those goals. Has your dog made it down to Tampa yet? Not quite yet. I think he's going to come down at the end of the summer. What's your dog's name? Motley. Motley. Yep. Motley. Oh, Motley. Yeah. Motley, yeah. Motley crew, yeah. I was just going to yep. say, so you're a big Motley crew. Yeah, yep, yeah. that's what it came from, yep. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Kind of everything, you know, I'm actually a big Taylor Swift guy too. I uh, went to a concert with my sister. I, I had to chaperone my sisters when I was, like in, you know, 16 years old, and here I come away with it, a bigger Taylor Swift fan than them. So, big, big T-Swift guy. Is there any player in the NFL that is your favorite or you've looked up to anybody in particular? Or? Well, you know, growing up, I like to watch a lot of Joe Staley just because I was a tackle, similar kind of trajectory of the uh, career that he had, you know, skinny guy, got bigger, tight end to O-line. Thought we play relatively similar to when, when I was at tackle, just get out, block well in space. So Joe was always a guy, and then the older I got too, I like I'm a you know, I grew up a Vikings fan, so I like to watch Brian O'Neill as well. Just you know, really, really good right tackle. So he was uh, he th those are probably two guys that I like to watch a lot. Favorite Taylor Swift songs? Changes every day, but you know, <sighs> it's a tough one. See, I, I'm I'm big on the new stuff. A lot of people <laughs> don't like the new stuff, so um, something from the new Midnight's album. Uh, any get any day could change. So. Well, 1989 is probably my favorite album. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks, guys.